Hello everybody, this is Hank. Um, this is a second video uh, regarding the um, shoot menus. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about uh, shoot menu number two, but only one item out of the two that that are here, uh, namely the lens aberration correction for this video, okay? All right, so what is uh, lens aberration correction? So uh, let's go into the submenu. Okay, first off, the uh, camera, the RP, recognize uh, what kind of lens you have mounted on it. So, uh, in my case, it's the EF 50mm f1.8 STM. Okay, so uh, the default, these I believe are the default um, because I clear all the options prior to making this video. So the peripheral illumination correction uh, is uh, defaulted on, okay? Distortion correction off, and digital lens optimizer on, except that in this case there's a a, um, a picture of a, a file with a cross across, and what that is basically telling me is that... Um, is that the camera does not have the, the correction data there. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. But let's um, get back to this. Okay, uh, what this is, is uh, uh, depending on the lens range. Some lens, when you take a picture in the middle, you have enough brightness, but around the edges, uh, there, there would be like dark in the area. So it's uh, a common a common problem, and we call it vignetting. And sometimes in post-processing, you actually inject the vignetting for some cases, especially for portrait and stuff. Now, um, theoretically, if you don't want it, and then and then you um, you correct for it. All right. So. Um, in this case, uh, this thing says that, yeah, the correction data is av available for this lens. Okay, so, um, so that's one. Okay, back to the main menu here for this. So the next one would be distortion correction. Okay, and... Um, what is distortion anyway? Okay, so so some lenses has got um, problem with um, with distortion, right? So, for example, if you take um, a square box, depending on the, the the distortion, the square box may be distorted in some way. Okay, and as a matter of fact, when you take pictures of uh, buildings and stuff like that, and they usually are pretty crooked. Um, in some ways, like sometimes the top would be more crooked in one one direction, and and the bottom would be the other. So therefore, um, most lenses doesn't really matter how expensive they are have a certain amount of distortion correction. So uh, normally, I correct these things uh, using uh, Photoshop, but um, the camera does have a capability to correct it. Okay. So, um, the uh, default, for whatever reason, is disable. And if you want to turn it on, you can enable it. I'm going to just leave it, it off. For, uh, as a matter of fact, I don't use these at all because, because I shoot in RAW, and uh, none of these corrections are applicable to a RAW file anyway. It will be applicable if you use a saving as, as a JPEG or... You're saving as a raw file, but then you decided to use a camera to process a raw file into JPEG. In that case, these corrections will be applicable. But other than that, um, it doesn't really matter. So if, if you just shoot nothing but raw, then you can might as well just turn all of these off to, to save some processing power for the, the camera, okay? All right, so the next one is a digital lens optimizer. 
Okay, and um, here because you see the symbol, the symbol you go in here and it it basically telling you that it cannot correct because there's no data for it. So you kind of you 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 can either create your own data or download data from somewhere and put it in um, the um, um, the DPP, you know. And I I think. I think somehow this thing might recognize it, or or the DPP is going to correct it for you. But um, there's no data here, so obviously, okay. So the the okay, I'm gonna press info because it said info has to help data. So let's read that. It said correct various aberration caused by optical characteristics of a lens, like a diffraction phenomenon and a deterioration of resolution caused by low-pass filters. So, so it's basically doing that. Okay, uh, two things, which is a very useful correction, actually. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with the term diffraction. Diffraction happens when you have a really uh, small uh, aperture opening. So basically, a very large aperture value, right? Let's say f11, f16, f22, and so on and so forth. Because the hole is so small, the light going through it has got diffracted. So it's kind of spread out, okay? And, and in doing so, you know, it kind of make the picture blurrier than, than it should be. So, so that had always been the problem. And apparently, this one can correct for it. Um, okay, the um, the low pass filter is basically anti aliasing filter that that most camera has, it, with a few exceptions like my 5DSR. Uh, the R it doesn't have low pass filter. Low pass filter is is doing it to prevent um, um, you know more pattern uh, problem. So um, in in doing so, it kind of affect your your sharpness because of a low pass filter. Um, so th these things can correct for it. Now um, apparently for this lens, uh, I cannot really correct for it. So I'm gonna disable it here, and, and I, I want you to see what happened after I disable that. It's kind of interesting. Okay, prior to this. Okay, there there was no chromatic aberration correction, diffraction correction option, correct? Here, let, let me show that to you again. Okay, if I turn it on, okay, the two options disappear. Because Digital Lens Optimizer has those two built in. But because I don't have the data for it, I'm not sure in what area I disable this and then the chromatic aberration correction. Now uh, what is chromatic aberration correction? I don't know if you know but um, but basically when you take a picture uh, where there's a very harsh contrast especially in light right for example uh, um, you take a, a picture of the mountain right and the sky is backlit and, and it's pretty bright, and the mountain is pretty dark. So around the the light and dark edges, okay, the the lens uh, could produce a chromatic aberration in in the the in terms of um, either a magenta color or a green color. So you have a green cast, the line across that, and and it looks pretty awful. And um, normally. Post-processing um, programs uh, can correct that. I know that Photoshop uh, has a feature for that. How effective is a different story. But um, So this one supposedly will be able to uh, correct it for you as well. Okay, so you can... Um, and surprisingly, it says that for this lens, um, the data is available. Okay? Um, as I mentioned, I turn all of this off because I'm using Photoshop for everything. But it's up to you. And remember, it's only applicable to the JPEG file or the RAW file if you use on-camera conversion to change it into JPEG. 
Otherwise, um, it's not doing anything for you. So I'm going in here, and I actually, for me, okay, I turn all of this off. Now, if you are using RAW and JPEG, and then you may um, might want to keep these on. But so basically, these are all of the corrections that that really matters. Okay. Um, uh, with that, I think I'm going to close this uh, one now. My next video, I'm going to, going to talk about external speed light control. Um, I was going to say both, but it's too long. So we'll, we'll, we'll stop here and do another video on the other topic. Thank you very much.